And then the last piece that really helped me fill out this model is really a model of therapy called relational cultural therapy. And so it's a really beautiful model of therapy that basically says people grow through and toward relationships. So not only are we created for connection, but by connection. So the way I figure out who I am, the way I become who I am meant to be is in the context of relationships. And this is true. And here my faith comes into play with God. Who am I in Christ? I would say with my, in my Christian faith, but also who am I in relationship with my wife, in relationship with my community, in relationship with my friends? How do I do that? How do I navigate that? This idea, and there might even be some people on this call. I recognize some of these names here um, who have thought, who have even said, I need to go fix myself first. I need to go figure out who I am. You know, I, I don't know who I am when, when I'm sober. I don't know who I am apart from my addiction. I don't know who I am apart from this relationship. So I need to go take care of me and figure out who I am. And then I can come back and maybe be a part of this relationship. Well, here's the deal. You're going to go figure out who you are in some relationship. So you're going to be in a relationship with guys in a support group or with a therapist or with some community somewhere to figure out who you are. Why not do that in your most important relationship? And what if that's actually the key to finding freedom for yourself is that you are able to rest as who you are in relationship. Also from relational cultural therapy, maturity is characterized by and comes through mutual authenticity, empathy, and empowerment in relationships. So these three things, mutual authenticity, which I would say is honesty, being real, telling the truth, empathy. So being able to feel with the other person, empowerment, mutual empowerment. I want to give my partner more choices, not less choices. I don't want to control my partner. I want to give her the ability to choose even more because how much more freedom and security do I feel in the relationship if she's there because she chooses to be there, not because I've set up her world and managed her reality so that she thinks she has to be there or she thinks she's choosing to be in one reality when in fact that's a false reality. The ability to navigate relational complexities is a sign of forward psychological development. How do you grow psychologically? How do you develop as a person through relational complexities? So if we table the relationship and all the complexities that come with it, we're actually tabling the source of our own development. The field of professional counseling, which is my field of, of mental health, if I'm tabling the complexities of a relationship, then what I'm doing is I'm setting aside the very means of growing. Professional counseling as a field is based on the idea that human development and, and issues that arise in the process of development and delay development is really at the root of most problems people have. So we're trying to help our clients move forward in development. Well, the way you move forward in develop, development individually is in the context of figuring out how to do relationships with all their complexities. So putting all that together, what that means is you never have to choose between what's best for you and what's best for your relationship because what's best for your relationship defines what's best for you. Notice my big asterisk here. This only works if both individuals are committed to this principle. 